and we not right. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I hope you guys are safe in this bad weather. Actually, like the site uh, that, that which give electricity to Mission Vale, and Taping, it was like it was due to the heavy wind. So, all like the south side of Azol. We don't have light from the morning. I think around from nine, nine like that. We don't have light from the morning. So that's why our network is not this good. And uh, tonight our Bible study will be taken by uh, Brother Philip. As we all know, Brother Philip, uh, he's a staff worker of UESI based in Mizoram. And we know we all know that Brother Philip like had a beautiful wife, Mr. Salome, and. So Salome is also a staff of UESI. He's also based in Mizoram. And they have uh, they have been blessed with three beautiful daughters. And as you all know, Brother Philip, like uh, we have learned so many things from him. He's a man of prayer, he's a man of faith, and like he really worked hard after coming from Mizoram also. He really worked hard and through his like dedication, many life, many student life and even the EGF life have, have been touched. Uh, have been touched like through the life of Brother Philip, and the good thing about Brother Philip is that he is praying for all the single EGF so that we can have a uh, how will I say a good life partners. So we really have to thank him for that one. He was really praying hard for all the EGF, like single EGF, for <laughs> for our future partner. So we really thank Brother Philip. And uh, before I give time to Brother Philip. Before I give time to Brother Philip, let me look to God in prayer, okay? Let me pray, and after this, I'll give that to Brother Philip. Let me look to God in prayer. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your guidance and your protection, Lord, today. You have given us a beautiful moment once again. Lord, even though the network was not good, and we thought that we will not be able to have this program, but Lord, you are faithful. At the right time, Lord, you give us a network so that we can have this Bible study also. We thank you for your good, your strong hands, and Lord, your powerful hands. Lord, tonight as we gather here, we also pray for our speaker, Brother Philip. Lord, prepare, uh, Lord, bless his preparation, Lord, so that whatever we learn tonight, Lord, it will be, it will be a tool which help us to bring other, our friends, our dear ones closer to you. We committed our network so that, Lord, help us, please give us a good network so that we can have this Bible study till the end of the, till the end. We submit ourselves and the Bible study to about to to your mighty hand. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Now let me give time to uh, Brother Philip. Oh, thank you so much, uh, okay. Brother Viala, for your uh, kind introduction. Uh, you have you have introduced uh, much more than what I am actually is. So, anyway, thank you so much for your kind introduction and. <clears throat> I want to thank God for giving us, giving all of us this opportunity to come together in this manner for a short time of Bible study this evening. And in fact, uh, since morning, we were uh, worrying, we were worrying like, because, the, because of the power cut, uh, uncertainty about the uh, network and so but I'm sure this is God's plan and it's a miracle that uh, Brother Viala also could be uh, joined and all of us could be together in this manner this evening so I'm sure all of us might have uh, seen the or read even read the Giving given passage, which is from First John chapter 
3 verse 14 to 18. <clears throat> and uh, I will just try to give a brief uh, introduction about this first John. So in uh, first John is written by uh, John Epistle is written by John the disciple. Uh, here, uh, the basic theme mentioned here is uh, that we see in chapter one, verse five and chapter four, verse eight, God is light and God is love. So light and love is being a major theme here in this book. And <clears throat> so uh, here is this book is very, very interesting. Why? Because <clears throat> John walked with God for 60 years. John walked with God for 60 years. He could see the church, churches being established, witnessed lots of miracles and uh, many things. Like the movement was so strong initially, like uh, people, believers, spoken in tongues and pro prophesizing and and then seeing the ministry of other other apostles uh, growing and at the same time apostles all the apostles other apostles all died he was the only person left and uh, and he was the only one leaving and he had seen the mighty movement of churches being established and uh, mighty movement of churches being established and also he had seen the churches being declined in the end of the first century. Seen various false prophets and false doctrines and uh, uh, that zeal at the same time, the zeal of the believers, you know, it was, uh, the movement was, uh, it was growing so strongly and then it was declining so badly. And so, uh, and now with a maturity of 90 years of old man, 90 year old man who walked with God for 60 years and who knows God so intimately. And so <clears throat> he walked with God so intimately. And so with 60 years of walking with God, and he uh, knew, he knew where people have emphasized and uh, went astray. So, uh, and he knew which were the areas where uh, the believers were given so much emphasized, but taking all that into consideration with 60 years of walking with the Lord, so matured walking with God so intimately. And now he knew what is the most important thing. Considering everything, he came to conclusion what is the most important thing for the believers, for the believers. So that is emphasized here in uh, John, 1 John. Uh, <clears throat> some scholar says uh, this, he had written 1 John after he had written a Revelation, after he had written the John Gospel and 2 John and 3 John. And some scholars say this is uh, probably this first John is the first last book written. So here we see that uh, uh, John was not at all emphasizing about church government. And he was not at all emphasizing about healing or speaking in tongues or prosperity or he was 
not at all emphasizing in any other things. But he was emphasizing and starting this book way back. He was emphasizing on what was there when there was no earth, when there was no heaven. He was emphasizing that there was perfect unity among or among Father God, Father the Son, the Holy Spirit. Father God, the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Perfect unity that uh, 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 we could see here. And uh, so, by the way, are you able to hear? Are you able to hear? Are you audible? Yes, yes. All right. Oh, praise God. <clears throat> praise God. <clears throat> so here, yes, we could see that uh, he was starting with perfect unity that was there. Uh, that was there. Uh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And here we will see how John is emphasizing the, the major theme, one of the major theme, themes that he emphasized here is that love one another. Love one another. And true fellowship, true fellowship, and uh, love and fellowship is being emphasized here. So now we uh, we let's move into the giving uh, given passage, uh, which is uh, which is um, verse John chapter three verse fourteen to eighteen. <clears throat> we can spend maybe few minutes, just few minutes to go through it. Uh, first John chapter three. Verse 14 to 18. <laughs> <clears throat> I don't want to give up that pass. Keep on praying. I will see it's better on stand up. So uh, let us keep praying. Let's keep on praying for the network because uh, network is very unstable. So let's uh, let's keep on praying as we continue with our Bible study. <clears throat> right. So I'm sure uh, you might have gone through and <clears throat> now uh, I think we are many of us nine. we are nine of us and uh, since the network is poor so we will not take much time so I will encourage all of us to participate in a chat box and uh, we'll go faster so that before the network uh, becomes poor, we will try to finish it, right? So now, <clears throat> yes, what are the repeated words that we see here in this 
uh, four verses. Yeah, repeated words that we see in these verses. Love. Yes, very good. In these four verses, five times love is repeated. Yes, death. Very good. Life. Very good. Anyone. Yes. Three times anyone mentions mother again two times. Very good. Very good. Yeah, Masaki. Very good. Brother, sisters. Very good. Right. Yes. Right. Very good. Yes, these are the repeated words that we could see here. Love is most emphasized here very nice and okay uh, who are the people oh what different type of people are mentioned here in these four verses who are the people or different type of people mentioned here in these four verses Yes. There are so many people, so many different type of uh, character mention. People who hate, people who love, very good. Born again, people. Very good. Very good. Who gives? Very good. Right. Murderer. Right. Very good. Material position people. Very good. Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus Christ. Right. So, yes, we see we, we also mentioned there, we, brothers, sisters, anyone, children, yes, as you have mentioned uh, above, also repeated once. So, <clears throat> people who love with words only, yes, very good, right, right, materialistic. Yes, very good. So these are the <clears throat> characters, uh, different type of characters that we could see mentioned here in these four verses. <clears throat> right, here, okay, we, we will proceed in verse 14. Who is the we in verse 14? We. Who is the we in verse 14? Who? We is referring to who? Children of God. Very good, sister. Very good, thank you. <clears throat> right, born again Christian. Right, yes. So, believers, so you and I, you and I fall in this category. We, 
believers, children of God, people who people who have BA degree, BA degree Christian, born again. Yala, thank you. So now next we go to next. Uh, how do we know that we have passed from death to life? How do we know that we have passed from death to life? And verse 14. Love for brothers, love each other, love each other. Very good, very good. When we have love for our brothers, so that shows, yes, <clears throat> that shows. Yes. So pass from death to life because we love each other by loving each other. Thank you so much. And what about what about those who do not love? What about those who do not love? <clears throat> What happened to them? Those who do not love. According to this, remains in debt. Very good. Today, very good. Remains in debt. Who has no love is still debt in NLT. Yes, very good. Very good. So those who <clears throat> we know loving each other, that is the indication according to this, that is the indication that we have left debt to life. We have passed from debt to life. And But those who do not have love, they still remain in debt. Yes. Right, equivalent to mother who cannot have eternal life. Very good, very strong, very strong. Equivalent to mother. Yes, Sister Sampui, there's this a very, very strong uh, word which uh, John was emphasizing here, which you have rightly pointed out. So there is no eternal life for people. For the mother, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Lampui. All right, here, who is a mother, and what is the ugly fact about such person? Who is a mother, and what's the, what is the what is the ugly fact about such person? We are still in verse 15. Who hates a brother? Yes. Who hates a brother? Very good. Naisaki. Naisaki, thank you so much. Who hates a brother? Right. Very good. Yes. <clears throat> Sad thing is the mother 
as Sister Trumpy has rightly pointed out, Viala has rightly pointed out, no eternal security, no eternal life for the one who hates. Who hates? There is no eternal life for, for them. That is the ugly fact about such person as murderer. Very good. We go to the next. How did or how do we know if someone truly loves in verse 16? How do we know? How do we know that someone who truly loves in verse 16? Yes. And also, <clears throat> right, um, yeah, should they, when they love their brothers and sisters, yes, when they love their brothers and sisters, when a person willing to give life for others, right, yes, very good, truly loves, truly loves, yes. A person who is willing to give life, uh, willing to even die to the extent of die. Yes, loving brothers and sisters uh, as believing brothers and sisters with wholeheartedness. Yes, <clears throat> right. Oh, from YouTube. Uh, wonderful, wonderful that we give our life for them. Wonderful, uh, Ramen Maui Otu. My ni, my ni, sorry, uh, my ni Potu. Thank you, thank you. So, all right, what practical implication do we see in this verse 17? Practical implication that we see in verse 17. Jesus Christ, let down his life for us, right? In verse 17, <clears throat> the practical implication that we see in verse 17. Share a material position possessions to those who are in need. Very good, sister. Tampui. Love with action. Yes. Uh, verse 17. Yes. Share a position. Share a position. Yes. Very good. Yes. Here are positions. Right. Yes. All right. Sharing our positions and that me that includes like uh, uh, even sharing what we have with others. Sharing what we have with others what see that what others don't have and what i have seeing that someone is in need and then uh, helping yes 
uh, giving, very good, sharing, very good. Uh, so let's uh, sharing even address. If I have four, give one. If I have three, give one. So sharing what we have, possessions, money we give when we see the needs around. So all that includes, yes, very good. We go to the next, the last one for observation. What is the exhortation that we see in verse 18? What encouragement, what exhortation that we see in verse 18? Yes, this is a wonderful encouragement or exhortation, which is giving us, which is, which is telling us. Lead, L-I-D, that love is not just a noun, but a verb. Okay, very good. This is <laughs> very nice. Not just a verb or not a noun, but a verb, action, right? And that is very smart. Yes. Catherine, yes, life demonstrate true loving deeds, action, right? Showing love in action, demonstrating our love in action, loving action. Yes, very good. Very good. Right. Yes, so not only action, oh, not only words, but action. And action in what way? In truth, no? That is something very interesting. With, wow. let us not love with words alone or speech, but with action and intrude, action and intrude, which is very, very important. Uh, I, you know, like when somebody comes to me and uh, share, share his financial struggles and uh, I can just pray for him and send him, oh, may God bless you. Oh, God will make a way for you. Don't worry. It's okay. That will not work. We'll have to, uh, uh, you know, encourage him, pray with him, and then uh, share with him. If there is any correction is needed, uh, if there is any kind of uh, uh, teaching to be given, teach and with love and in action. That means when he is in need, so when he is in need, uh, when he is in need, when he is in need, then we we'll have to see and pray with him, bless him, and give him something, uh, something which is required. Yes. So here we see life demonstrate true love in deeds. Yes, uh, Catherine. Yes. Uh, here, James chapter 2, verse 16. James chapter 2, verse 16 says, What good is there in your saying to them, God bless you? Keep warm and eat well. 
if you don't give him or if you don't give them the necessities of life you know what good is there by saying to them hey may god bless you oh keep yourself warm okay so stay safe and stay comfortable enjoy how can we just say what good is that you know to bless so we have to see the needs and then bless them with prayer and meet their needs yes so here we go to the next right thank you so much for your participation and i think we are uh, going quite what is the time now all right yeah we will go, try to go a little faster here we go to the interpretation okay what is the meaning of passing from death to life what is the meaning of passing from death to life yes yes thank you so much mama tia right you can share born again right born again passing from death what is the meaning of passing from death to life yes born again that is very true born again passing from death what were our condition what what was our life what was our life before we uh, you know yes transformation in christ okay transformation in christ right yes being transformed all right so yes uh, we were we were in a uh, we were in a very helpless situation our life was our life your life my life we all were living in a very miserable life we all were living in a very miserable life and there uh, not because uh, we were in such a situation and god came god came to you and i to save us there we come we go to him and then uh, we give our life he invited you and i and accordingly we responded to his invitation and uh, we gave our life to jesus that is the transformation uh, we were going to a miserable miserable life life our destiny was death our destiny was death eternal death we were in such a restless helpless life we were living but jesus jesus he came and uh, he he uh, he gave his life to you and i and we uh, uh, we accept him as our lord and savior yes that uh, how we gave our life to jesus yes so what is remaining what is remaining in death me what is remaining in death 
mean yes remaining in debt means Yes, he pointed out in the uh, observation also that <clears throat> uh, those uh, remain in that means uh, no eternity, no eternal life. There is no eternal life. There is no hope. The destiny is hell. So. Uh, Remaining in debt means that there is no hope, there is no eternal life. Yes, thank you. All right, the next question is very interesting. Friends, uh, don't you think John is too harsh in calling those who hate his brothers and sisters a murderer? Don't you think John is too harsh in that calling those who hate his brother or his sister a mother? Those who hate his brother and sister and mother. Is, do you think that Jesus is, uh, John is uh, too harsh in calling those people? <clears throat> Anyone? Or oh, is it okay? Is it too harsh? Or is it too okay? All right. No, he spoke the truth in the most loving way. Catherine, no, he is not harsh. He is not harsh. He spoke the truth in the most loving way he could. Very good. And okay, yes. My knee. All right. When we don't care enough to share the gospel, it means that we don't care our brothers, our brothers' eternal life. All right. Yes. Very good. All right. Okay. So some says maybe a little harsh, or some say no, he is speaking plainly in in a most loving way, yes. <clears throat> so yes, 
So when we don't share our brother's eternal life to care, that shows that we are, we are, we, we don't care. Yes, in a way we are mothers if we don't love. Very good, very good. Right, so how can we connect this teaching to Jesus teaching about mother that we see in Matthew 5, 21, 22. How can we connect this with uh, Jesus teaching about mother? Yes. All right, Jesus is still more harsh. Jesus is still more harsh as compared to John, right? Yes, 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 <clears throat> yes. Uh, this is that Viola. This is very true. Jesus is our uh, John is not harsh. This is just echoing what Jesus said, right? What Jesus said, he is just echoing uh, what Jesus has, uh, Jesus had said. Yes. So <clears throat> here, uh, Jesus is uh, teaching about uh, mother. Mother in Old Testament, mother is. Uh, in the Old Testament, healing, do not murder. But in the New Testament, murder means uh, even if you are unhappy, you are bitter with your own brother and sister in your heart, that means you are a murderer, right? Jesus is very strong in this, much more than not that you take a spear or a knife and stab to someone to death, not that way. But Jesus was trying to say that, hey, if you are unhappy and bitter, having grudges again, your own, against your own sister and brother, that means you are a murderer. You are a murderer. So here, <clears throat> Uh, uh, John was saying what Jesus had said. Yes, very good. So <clears throat> having bitter bitterness against your own brother and sister. Yes, we go to the next. Now, what does John mean when he said we ought we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters that we see in verse 16. Do we need to, okay, what does John mean when he said uh, to lay down or we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters? That mean, does it mean that we need to die physically? Or, or what do you say? Oh, the question was audible.
we have yes we have we have to have we have to have the love that is willing to do that all right right to love them like we love ourselves very good to have the love that is willing to do that all right willing to 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 uh uh to be in a position or to go to the extent of giving our life uh when to die for them all right yes to love them like we love ourselves as sister tanpuri has said yes right <clears throat> right so yeah uh to to lay down our lives for our brother and brothers and sisters yes that may not be exactly as jesus died for the sins of mankind jesus dying on the cross for you and i for the sin of sins of mankind it may not be in that sense but uh uh you know uh to die to uh, in such a way that uh we uh, will we uh <clears throat> willingness willingness even to suffer willingness to uh go to the worst worst situation even you know that love should uh drive drive us even to go to the worst situation uh uh in for the sake of our fellow brothers and sisters willing to go to any extent willing to go to any extent sacrificing one self for others right very good my ni <clears throat> sacrificing like uh, that we see in philippians chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 philippians chapter 2 verse uh 3 and 4 that we see <clears throat> do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others above yourselves not looking for your own interest but each of you in the interest of others right so that we see in uh, philippians chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 <clears throat> real love as we have mentioned some of you have uh, mentioned also <clears throat> in verse uh, verse 18 real love is an action not a feeling it produces selfless sacrificial living sacrificial living so <clears throat> you know serving others serving our fellow brothers and sisters with no thought of receiving anything in return helping someone without any expectation in return means unconditionally helping serving being available being available helping 
without uh, expecting anything in return. Yes. So <clears throat> uh, maybe we will end here with our uh, with our interpretation and uh, so here we go to the next uh, application right so now we'll be let's try to be more interactive again so first one can we say that we have we have passed from death to life. Back to, uh, you know, verse 14. Passed, we have left death to life. Or we have passed from death to life. Can we say that we have passed from, from death to life? All of us? About yourself, about myself. Yes. Pakka, thank you. Already passed. Passed, yes. Passed. Today, very good. From death to life. Yes, by the grace of God. Brother Java, yes. Be a pass. Praise God. I like this. Sister Lampui, BA pass, praise God. <clears throat> BA degree, all, oh, I'm sure who are in the YouTube also agreed, BA pass, right? Then, okay, what is our assurance about this? Yes, Viala, right. What is our assurance about this? Or how, how can we be sure about this assurance of salvation? How can we be sure? How can we be sure? Yes, we pass from death to life. We were in a miserable, miserable life, helpless life, but Christ came and we gave our life to Jesus. But how can we be sure about this? What is the assurance about this? How are we? How can we be sure that we have BA degree, BA pass? With the help of the Holy Spirit, we have peace. Yes, there is peace deep down in our hearts. Very good. Deep down. Oh. Deep down in our heart, there is peace. Very good. When we have peace deep down in our heart, we are able to love our fellow believers, right? Yes. When there is deep, there is peace deep in our heart with the help of the Holy Spirit, that means we are peace with God and we are peace with our fellow believers. We have peace. We have peace with our fellow believers. Yes. And we have joy, right? We have joy deep down, the fullness of joy that comes within us. That fullness of joy is not seen in the life of the people, mother, so much of restlessness and helplessness and 
agitation and anger and hatred are there in them. But we, right, yes, so peace here as we have mentioned in the first in a observation part in five verses uh, in four verses we could see in four verses we could see five repeated words that is love right which john was emphasizing so much in this love we could see yes love love there is love godly love is there in us deep inside yes so yes uh, with the help of the holy spirit we have peace from what we learned tonight the love of others occurs in us yes we can't help ourselves to love and share with our brothers we can't help our, ourselves to love and share with our, uh, the love for others. Uh, so that peace and that love, which as Sister, Sister Trump, we rightly mentioned, with the help of the Holy Spirit, there is fullness of love in us. Yes, very good. And that love, that love which comes from God is in us. We love God in return and we love our fellow brothers and sisters. Right? Very good. So th this is the clear indication. This is the clear indication. Last Bible study that we had on last Saturday, which ended uh, with Brother Java, what, uh, what is the proof or how do we know that you are saved? How do we know that you have, uh, you have BA degree or you have the assurance of salvation? Brother Java ended with that question and this is in connection with that question uh, which is coming to us so clearly that how do we know that we have the assurance of salvation. Yes. So <clears throat> that day we uh, mentioned that uh, we have the assurance of salvation. We are sure by bearing fruit, right? In Galatians chapter 5, verse uh, 21, 22, there we see the fruit of the Holy Spirit will start bearing in the life of you and I in the life of the person who has BA degree. Yes. So <clears throat> here uh, is also again emphasized that loving one another, loving one another, having the peace deep inside, having the love of God in us and loving one another. Very good. <clears throat> so now we go to the next we go to the next and how are we loving one another as fellow believers? How is my love for my fellow believers? How is your love for your fellow believers? Let us ask ourselves. Our love for our believers for our fellow believers. How do we practice this in our family, in our UESI circle? So whoever wants to speak can also uh, unmute and so now how are we loving one another as fellow believers or how do we practice this loving one another in new ESI circle as you know fellow EGM members 
EGF graduates to graduates, EU to EU, or EU to EGF and EGF to EU, or staff, staff to staff, and staff to graduates and staff to EU, EU to graduate, EU to staff. So how do we practice in our UESI circle? We can, you can share your, it will be nice and encouragement. How do we really practice this? So you can unmute yourselves and you can share your opinion. That will be nice. That will help us in our, our love for each other as graduates, as EU, as staff. When you're not based. Thank you very much, brother, for the very engaging uh, study tonight. I would like just to add a few things. Uh, thank you so much. The first question is, who are these brothers and sisters? How can we define them? What is the kind of boundary that uh, we place on these brothers and sisters? When we talk about brothers and sisters, when the Bible says brothers and sisters here, who are these people? I think that's something that we have to think about. Now, I don't have the answer. Secondly, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it aligns with what we studied tonight. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Very beautiful description goes on in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So, uh, Love is the essence of a Christian life. Now, it is not just about giving some material possessions or sacrificing something. Love also encapsulates teaching, rebuking, uh, encouraging, pulling them out of wherever uh, mire they are in, and building up others investing our lives in them so loving also can mean rebuking them in fact this is what we have to do as a church also the church lovingly disciplines is uh, the church members and the church also encourages and the church teaches good things and the church tries tries to show examples and i think this is exactly what we need to do in the uesi circle also Encouraging, rebuking, teaching, showing them examples, while at the same time giving material possessions and money and clothing and shelter and all other earthly uh, uh, amenities that we can give that they are in need of. But more important than that is the spiritual welfare of that person. And one area that I would go extreme to the extreme and said is rebuking is the area where we lack so much here in Mizoram. When we see our brothers and sisters in the wrong side, and uh, we just tend to look away, turn our eyes away, don't want to confront them, try to understand their situation. If they're in the wrong, rebuking them and then bring them up, uh, teaching them lovingly. I think this is also something uh, that is... Uh, really uh, endemic to the church even. So we need to relearn what the New Testament here is teaching and what the first, uh, 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 you know, Christians during the first century are practicing, really correcting someone else uh, if they're in the wrong and if they do not perform or if we show that, you know, there are some signs that they might be falling away from the faith. All right. 
So I think these are the things that I want to say. But the first question that I ask, I will not answer. I think uh, uh, I will just throw that question out for the, the panel the panelists here. What do we mean by brothers and sisters here when we say, you know, when we mention in the Bible? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Mark, for your time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So while uh, Brother Philip is going to try and look for uh, Sister Esther to get his sound back, can anybody answer the first question that I ask? What do we mean by our brothers and sisters here? Is it simple term or is it our uh, flesh, real flesh and blood? Anybody? Yes, I was. I asked the question. Uh, anybody would like to answer, Brother Zava? Brother Philip would be back very soon, I think. Brother Zava, you can unmute yourself. When we say brothers and sisters right here in the context, who are these people? Oh. Well, thank you, brother. Yeah, I am still thinking because in other contexts, Paul do mean this brother and sister for those who believe in Jesus. So I am not sure these brother and sisters he said in general or yeah, yeah, for specific like the Christian family. Um, but I think this not uh, this doesn't mean the bloody relatives. But I'm not sure that yeah, everyone, uh, Christian or non-believers, also uh, all call this brother and sister or only the Christian family. Yeah, thank you. Right. Okay, let me just uh, share. Yes, I was about to ask you. <laughs> yes. Uh, when we talk about brothers and sisters, uh, Jane, uh, sorry, Galatians chapter 6, so verse 10 says, uh, let me just read out for you all, for us. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So I think when we uh, talk about uh, brothers and sisters here in this context, uh, I think it talks about the brothers and sisters, the family that we have in Christ. So that will be my answer to Brother Mark's question. Yeah, thank you. And to Brother Philip's question, um, how, how can we love one another? Uh, I think uh, from the, the context that we have learned tonight, it is by sharing our possessions. Our position can be anything. It can be in monetary terms. It can be like uh, Sister Shalom is gardening <laughs> our fresh vegetables also. And say Brother Mark, uh, he, uh, but even Brother Zawa also, they are intellectual people. They are masters in their subject and uh, they give free tuitions, which is worth thousands of rupees. So I think that is one way of uh, sharing also. So to our EU family, uh, since our EU are students as EGFs, I think we need to be sensitive of uh, 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 their spiritual needs as well as uh, in their studies also, how we can help them. And uh, in the same way, uh, we know all students are uh, with their running of uh, small pocket uh, money only. So it's always nice 
I, I think we we will experience all those uh, times when people treat us, uh, you know, with just one samosa. Also, we used to be so happy. So, uh, uh, I think we uh, in that EUSI context in what we learn, I think we can show our love to our brothers and sister in among our EU and EGFs also uh, by sharing whatever we have and whatever we can do for them. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your inputs, uh, which has made uh, uh, clear and <clears throat> yes, so uh, maybe when my wife also has something, I suppose. Uh, yeah, like uh, as Sister Tlagbui had pointed out, I think uh, uh, we have to keep it active. I, you call Esther. Yes, sir. So yeah, like Sister Tlagbui had pointed out, it uh, uh, here in this context, it specifically I think is talking about the uh, in the Christian household uh, uh, as believers. Brother Zava also had pointed out that it is not necessarily only about blood relations, but uh, the mm, in the Christian uh, in the Christian family, uh, in the God's uh, God's family as God's children, and uh, <clears throat> uh, right. So yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so this uh, in this uh, the what we have seen in the beginning part of this uh, is that now these people, the Christians in this uh, in this age, where John was writing to, uh, they were they were people who have been scattered after. Uh, you know, uh, after the destruction of the temple and uh, uh, it had, uh, Christianity had survived uh, persecutions and uh, it has been there for more than a generation. And now the main problem that was there in the church uh, is uh, they have started declining in their commitment as believers and conforming themselves to the worldly standards. They have departed so far uh, from the teachings of Christ and they have compromised in so many ways. And so many false teachers were there and now the church was really going downward. Uh, so in this situation, uh, John wanted to put the believers back on track. So loving one another as Christians, as we see in Acts and all, the believers, the first century believers, they were so much loving one another, uh, even more than they were among themselves in the like physical uh, blood relations. But as body of Christ, their love for one another was so strong. So in that situation now, with that situation in the first century, uh, now in this later part of the first century, the, the Christians have become so cold and uh, they have uh, you know left behind all the um, so much of basic tenets of uh, Christian life as Jesus taught so I think in that uh, putting all of this together now the first thing as Jesus also taught was love one another you as my disciples love one another so that others will also know that you are my disciples you belong to me I think John is teaching in that line most primarily to the, to the uh, among the Christians, brothers and sisters. You have to love one another. Show yourself as Christ's disciples by loving one another in every aspect. Like Brother Mark had pointed out also, even in teaching and rebuking and encouraging, pulling them back from the backslide, uh, backslidden situation. And, uh, and, and, uh, to, to concretely show that also material, sharing your material possession, as John, uh, John had pointed out in this context in verse 17. I think they have neglected so much of that part as well. 
to show that they love one another, sharing their material possession. I think that part they have really neglected. Otherwise, in the first century Christian, they didn't have anything which they can claim. They, they, they should claim that, oh, this belonged to me. Everything they have were they, they held in common. I think in that context, uh, John is trying to point out, if you have, you have, I have so much and I'm not willing to share. That is the biggest uh, 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 thing in the eye that, that can be seen by everybody that you, I have really lost my love for my brothers and sisters. So in that context, I think it is primarily to, uh, among the believers to love one another among the believers. Thank you, Thank you uh, so much for all your inputs insightful inputs. I'm sure that has uh, become, that has made clear when we say fellow believers, who are the fellow believers we are talking about. I think that has made clear. And <clears throat> now uh, fellow believers, uh, as we had Bible study in the past also, for you and I, uh, now, what is our family? Our family is a UESI circle, UESI circle. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, as Brother Mark has also pointed out, that we really need uh, to, to show our love means if I really love a person, that means uh, we, uh, we, when we love, when I say I love you, that means uh, I love a person uh, in such a way that we grow together. And if I say I love him and love you, and if I don't uh, encourage him or her with word or at times, if necessary, uh, uh, to uh, correct correct a person or even a rebuke to rebuke a person with love and with much prayer, I think that is uh, that is very very important to correct a person before I make correction to the person. He or she should know me so well that I love him. He should know me so well that I really love for him and I am sincerely praying for him. I think when a person realizes that, even if we make a correction or rebuking, a person, I believe, will take it uh, in a positive way. Because Jesus, Jesus is full of grace and full of truth. So to speak the truth with love and with grace. No? So in the Old Testament, we know if you obey, chocolate. If you disobey, stick. No? In the Old Testament, if you obey, chocolate. If you disobey, stick like that, punishment like that. But in the New Testament, Jesus is full of grace and full of love and full of truth. So I think as we, as EGF, because our ministry is a, is a voluntary in a way, of course, all of us uh, is a calling from the Lord. And at the same time, uh, staffs are uh, staffs are staff and when it comes to uh, graduates so it's a kind of a voluntary or overtime in a way so uh, we need to exercise that more with truth grace and love truth grace and love together when a person knows when a person knows that I truly love him and I truly and sincerely pray for his 
spiritual growth when he or she show so show show that so that i have that love and concern and and with correction and rebuking also they will take it with good spirit i believe right so thank you so much and we go to the next why because we say yes we all have passed uh, from death to life and we we know that the assurance of salvation and how uh, that also we have seen and then now how is our love for our loving for one another that also we have dealt and now we go to the next question finishing part soon if jesus is to evaluate you and i today if jesus is to evaluate you and i today will we be in a loving category or in a murderer category if jesus is to evaluate you and i today i mean when it comes to love love for my fellow believers love for my brothers and sisters in christ love for my eu my dear eu members and egiers and or even my staff team my love if jesus is to evaluate my love for my graduates and for my uh fellow students loving students what would be jesus what would be in which category i would be or if i'm to give if jesus is to give me a, a great no great great which great this is a difficult question all right yes so we can just ask ourselves because love love is the way jesus love for us he lays down his life for you and i right so this for god so loved the world so love so much how much he stretched his hands to the fullest and gave his life for you and i and if we truly know john 3:16 you and i also should know first john chapter 3 verse 16 right if we truly know that jesus died for you and i on the cross i you and i should know also what we should be doing for our fellow brothers and sisters as given in john first john chapter 3 verse 16 which is so important so important there in verse 16 it says this is how we know what love is jesus christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters for our brothers and sisters so you know jesus laid down his life you know it's something very interesting jesus lays down his life he he peter for example he was saying that oh 
I will go to the extent of giving my life to death for you. You know, and uh, but for you, but Jesus knew that you are going to reject me, or you are going to reject me three times. So that is something very interesting. So the way Jesus loves, extends his love unconditionally. So how can you and I also extend our loves? That, that kind of love Jesus has for you and I. So that you and I can also, you know, you, can, you and I can also have that kind of love for our fellow Egyptians, for our fellow graduates and our fellow uh, EU students. No? So oh, I'm sure when they come to know that I have a genuine love for my fellow believers or for my fellow graduates and EUs, I'm sure, if not today, soon they will be moved. They will be moved. They will be moved with the godly love that you and I have. The Christ-like love that you and I have will surely be able to influence our, our fellow uh, brothers and sisters, yes. How can we lay down our lives for one another? Again, similar question. Maybe we are in the last question now. How can we lay down our lives for one another? And how can we love with action and in truth? And as Brother Mark has point, rightly pointed out in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you know, that, that love, Brother Mark has pointed out, read or pointed out so clearly. So how can we lay down our lives for one another? And how can we love one another with action and in truth? Connecting to uh, First Corinthians chapter thirteen. Right. Christ is right. Yes, thank you, Brother Java. Christ is love. If we have the spirit of Christ, we can love one another. Wonderful. Wonderful. <clears throat> yes. Yes. Praying for them, very good. Yala, praying for them. Right. Praying for them.
So, right. Yeah, maybe I will elaborate a little bit. In what way can we sacrifice ourselves for our students, for our graduates, for their spiritual growth? In what way can we sacrifice ourselves? As yes, for our students, our graduates, for their spiritual growth, as Brother Viala has mentioned, that praying for them, having time for them, yes, that is very, very, very difficult. Everyone is busy. Now we are getting uh, time, at least to have Bible study because of the lockdown. And once the lockdown is over, everyone is going to rush and uh, it's giving time is going to be a big challenge, giving time time for them, giving time for them, for graduates, for students, very, very important. Very good. <clears throat> yes, uh, right, praying for them and, and uh, keeping, keeping our home open open home, as Brother Mama Dea had said, our availability will be very, very, very important. Yes, availability. <clears throat> At times, we may be available, but, you know, students may, uh, might feel uncomfortable. But uh, in the initial stage, that little struggle will be there in the initial stage, but when the students feel, start feeling comfortable with you and I, then that is uh, our, our time, our valuable time for them will really will have impact. Yes. So <clears throat> maybe I will just, uh, yes, we should call on their names. Very good. I know them well personally, Brother Jawa. I really like that. Calling them and which, uh, calling them and asking their struggles and uh, uh, carefully, attentively listening to them and allow them to express freely their struggles, problems. Oh, and know them personally and praying for them specifically. We come to know that when she shares my sister or my brother is a drunk or oh, he brings oh problem to the family. And then you call what she had shared from her heart. You call and ask maybe after one week and she knows that you care for them and they feel, she feels so comforting and, and uh, so encouraging. Yes, very good. Knowing them personally, very good, Brother Jawa. And one thing I also want to say is, maybe first I will share this uh, uh, as before Brother Mark I mentioned that love is patient, love is kind in First Corinthians chapter 13. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Very, very important. It keeps no record of wrongs. When I love you, that love overwhelmed and doesn't keep any record of wrong. Wonderful. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. It always 
protects, always trust, always hopes, always perseveres. Very good. There is always trust. He is not interested. She is not interested. But still, I have still trust. I have still have full hope. You know, some of the graduates, you know, I, uh, oof, he is so committed in the past. I still have great hope in them. I don't give up. I still fast and pray that, oh, she or he becomes active as they were in their, in their college days. So, you know, have always hopes, always perseveres, always trust, you know. So, we will do that. We will do that. Right. And yes, now <clears throat> we come to the last part. We thought of finishing by 9.30. So last part, I want to share one thing. I want to share one thing. Uh, my wife will read out uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 18. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 18. Gospel according to John. Uh, gospel according to John. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God, and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. All right. No one has seen God, the only Son, who is, who is the same as God, is the Father's sight, he has made known. So no one has seen God. So seeing Jesus, seeing Jesus is seeing God. So God, Jesus has revealed he is the image of the invisible God. So then today, yes, we have not seen God, right? We have not seen God. Then how will our friends, how will our friends how will our family members, how will our friends from other faiths, how will they see Jesus? How will they see God? They will see God. They will see God. First John 4, 12. First John chapter 4, verse 12. How will they see God? No one has ever seen, even, uh, seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. So, if nobody has seen God, but if you and I love one another, if you and I, if you and I care for one another, love for one another, then you, ESI, they will be able to see the life of Christ in the life of the EU EGF, or uh, they will see the life of Jesus through our love for one another, through our love for one another as EGF, as EU, as EU, EGF, and stuff together. God will, God, God will be seen. Jesus will be seen in a little way through our EU students in the campus, through our graduates in our workplace, through the staff, you know. So that's how people will see Jesus. How? When you and I love for one another, when you and I love for each other. So thank you so much. And uh, so if we do not love one another, then there is no neutral gear that will make us to start backsliding. And when we start backsliding, we start having uh, uh, disagreement and 
start having miscommunication and start problem and that will lead us to uh, some bitterness and anger and hatred and then we are compared to motherer motherer and if as the scripture clearly says here in verse uh, 450 the, the destiny of a mother is eternal hell. Yes. So in conclusion, can we have love? Can we, you, E-S-I, can we, can you and I have love as a hallmark of you, E-S-I, Mizoram? Can we have love as a hallmark of you, E-S-I, Mizoram? Thank you so much for uh for your uh patience and for your participations thank you so much so with this i conclude and i'm i was supposed to finish by 9 30 but i have exceeded so yes brother java sorry uh no no from Casey, Casey from YouTube. Saha, in my opinion, we should be in loving category. We would be in loving category because he loves us even if we did something wrong. As soon as we turn back to him, he accepts us as just as we are. Very good. Very good, Casey. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. Thank you. So you have anyone who likes to uh, just share quickly, maybe some few minutes you can take time and, and, uh, and accordingly we will close or uh, hand over to Brother Viala. Uh, hello. Oh, thank you so much, brother. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, brother, like for the wonderful Bible study. And I think, brother, I'll hand, I'll hand the ending part to you. To you, okay? Okay. I'll just share some few and I'll, I think you can end up from your side, I think. You can end up from that side also. And thank you so much for the wonderful Bible study. And it was really like a really striking, striking Bible study. And I think we need to remember this and we have to examine ourselves every day in, from this Bible verse. Because like uh, even loving our own siblings also sometimes is difficult. Like uh, I think we, it's all true even in us also. Like even loving our own like siblings, not like our fellow Christian also, but even our siblings. Sometimes we face problem in loving our siblings because like if we look at today world, like if we go to the if we look at the really today world, like many like brother and sister like siblings, they are going to the court like fighting for the land, fighting for the property. So I think we really need to look onto this word and practice today in our daily life also because there are so many like fighting. This is most of the fighting are between like brothers and sisters, not between like like others, but most of the court case are between the like siblings fighting for the property of their father and mother. I think we really need to look to see on this word and like uh it's very practicable also. And even me, I need to love more my brother and sister in Christ, like in the USI family also, because like when I look at myself today, like I did so less. I, I did so less uh, for my brother and sister in Christ also. So I need to do more. So I'll conclude with that one. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, all of you, for being uh, very patient. And now 
let's uh, maybe we'll close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you and praise you, Lord, for enabling us to understand what you wanted to uh, tell us this evening. Lord, you help us to love one another the way you love me, the way you love us. You help me to love my fellow believers. As Brother Viela has rightly pointed out, oh, even my own siblings, even my own siblings, loving our own siblings also become a big challenge today because there is so much problem. Oh, there's so much court cases with their family members because of property issues, which is so true, oh Lord. But Lord, as as genuine believers of UESI Mizoram, as genuine believers, we need to even go to the extent of giving up. If my own brother is, is, uh, is trying to snatch the property which I'm given, I'm given right to claim or which belongs to me, if my own brother is tempted and is, is making ways to snatch that away from my, my, the property which belongs to me, even to that extent, we should be able to just say, yes, no problem, you take it, it's okay. Lord, you give us that big heart as UESI family members, Mizra. May it be students, may it be staff, maybe be coordinators or graduates. Help us to have that big heart, big love, O Lord Jesus. Oh, when I need it, God, Jesus will give me when I need it. He knows he will take care. Lord, you help us. You help us, O Lord. Thank you so much. And Lord, help us. And Lord, as 1 Corinthians chapter 13 was, has reminded us so clearly, help us to love unconditionally our fellow UESI fellow members, believers. Always, always, with always having full hope, confidence, O Lord, with trust, with so much trust, O Lord Jesus. Persevere, O Lord. Thank you so much. May you bless the UESI family of Mizoram that, Lord, you will be seen. People do not see. We do not see you, O Lord. What? People will be able to see you through your ESI family. And we will be able to, we will be able to claim and have love as a hallmark of your ESI miserable. Thank you so much, O Lord, for hearing our prayers. And once again, thank you so much. We were worrying about the, we were worrying about the internet network. But Lord, thank you so much for hearing our prayers. We are able to finish all oh, together with no distraction of network in between. Thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus' precious name.